A lot of you might be familiar with the Chernobyl incident that occurred back in 1986. And maybe some of you have in fact watched the famous HBO Chernobyl TV series, which pretty much sums up the entire Chernobyl incident timeline. And along with various other documentaries and journals, display the dangers and safety issues posed by Soviet RBMK reactors. But have you ever wondered what RBMK reactors look like on the inside? Are you curious about how it works and its operational details? Well, today in this video, we will take a look at several design details of RBMK reactors and explore how they actually operate. Now, this might just turn out to be a very long and boring video, so uh, keep that in mind. So then, let's begin. The word RBMK stands for Reactor Balshoi Moshnasti Kanalni, which basically translates to High Power Channel Reactor. There are two most commonly known types of RBMK reactors, the RBMK-1000 and the RBMK-1500. Both are moderated with graphite. There are also several other types such as the RBMK-P2400 and RBMK-P4800. Not much is known about these types of reactors aside from the fact that they have a rectangular design instead of cylindrical. So in this video, we will just focus primarily on the first two. The reactor that was used in Chernobyl reactor number 4 was the RBMK-1000. The 1000 in the name suggests that the reactor has a nominal capacity of 1000 megawatts of electrical power, and the reactor can operate with a maximum thermal power of 3200 megawatts. The RBMK-1500 is an even more powerful version and has a nominal capacity of 1500 megawatts of electrical power at a maximum thermal power of 4800 megawatts. An example of the RBMK-1500 type is the Ignalina power plant in Lithuania. Both of these reactors have nearly identical design and that they pretty much operate in the same way. There are only a few differences, mainly in the Control and Protection System section, or CPS, but we will get into that later on. The reactor core vessel of the RBMK-1000 is a steel cylinder that houses the graphite stack inside. The cylinder is housed inside a 25 meters deep and a 21 times 21 meters wide concrete vault. The core is composed primarily of the graphite stack that contains channels mainly for the fuel assemblies and control and protection system. The graphite stack can be visualized as a vertical cylinder that is around 8 meters high and 14 meters in diameter. The stack is made up of 2488 graphite columns that are constructed from various types of graphite blocks, which acts as the main neutron moderator. And just a quick insight, a neutron moderator is a type of material that is used to slow down neutrons in order to make the nuclear fuel more likely to undergo a nuclear fission chain reaction. I will provide a link to the materials in the description down below, just in case if you want to know more about this stuff. Now, back to topic. The graphite blocks that make up the stack are rectangular shaped blocks with a base of 0.25 times 0.25 meters. The height of these blocks varies from 0.2 to 0.6 meters, depending on the placement. All of the graphite blocks have a 0.114 meters bore opening that is used as channels for the fuel assembly and the control rods. The core is also equipped with top and bottom biological shields that contain actual holes. These holes function to weld the water and steam tubes and connect them to the fuel and CPS channels. It is also filled with a circulating mixture of helium and nitrogen in order to prevent the graphite from undergoing oxidation and to reduce thermal resistance. Both RBMK-1000 and 1500 use uranium-235 as fuel in the form of uranium-4 oxide and had an enrichment of 2%, which is relatively low when compared to Western reactors which usually has an enrichment of 3-4%. to This is also one of the reasons why RBMK reactors have a relatively cheaper operational cost, therefore increasing its performance to cost ratio. The uranium fuel are shaped into small cylindrical pallets that are stacked inside metal tubes made of zirconium-niobium alloy which are then arranged in a circular pattern to form the fuel assembly. One fuel assembly has 18 fuel elements in total, with a carry rod in the center. The fuel channels that contain the fuel assembly are metal tubes that are also made of zirconium and niobium alloy, and they are positioned inside the graphite columns. Out of the 2488 graphite columns, 1661 columns are used for the placement for the fuel assembly channels. The bottom part of the channel is connected to a pressure tube that carries the cooling water from the main circulation pumps towards the channels. When the reactor is operational, the uranium fuel inside the fuel elements would then undergo a fission reaction, which would in turn heat up the water and convert it into a steam-water mixture. The steam and water mixture is then driven upwards to the pressure tubes that leads towards the separator drums. 
These separator drums function to separate the steam from the steam and water mixture in order to increase the steam concentration and pressure, which is further directed to the steam turbines. Both RBMK-1000 and 1500 are equipped with two steam turbines at least, which are located in the turbine hall. Each of them can generate electrical power of 500 megawatts for the RBMK-1000 and 750 megawatts for the RBMK-1500. After the steam passes the turbine, it is then driven towards the condensers. Each steam turbine has at least four steam condensers, which condenses the steam back to water, and it is driven back to the circulation pumps, creating a loop. Keep in mind that RBMK reactors have two parallel loops that act as the cooling mechanism of the reactor. Each loop consists of two separated drums and four circulation pumps, and each of them are responsible for cooling one half of the reactor. And this is generally how RBMK reactors operate in order to generate electricity. Now, it is also worth noting that in RBMK reactors, the water also acts as a moderately strong neutron absorber, combined with the presence of the graphite blocks acting as moderators. This basically means that, as more water is being evaporated, the reactivity of the fuel increases due to a void that is being created in the presence of graphite moderators. This is also widely known as a positive void reactivity. And this is actually quite the opposite to the nuclear reactors that are made in the West, which have a negative void reactivity, which decreases the reactivity when more water is being evaporated. This is because water is being treated as the main moderator instead of graphite. Keep in mind that this is actually one of the significant safety issues posed by RBMK reactors in general. Now, let's talk about the control and protection system. The CPS of RBMK reactors is very complex, and it is responsible for maintaining the power levels and the prosecuting various safety protocols. The first thing to consider is that the outer columns of rows on the reactor layout are equipped with radial reflectors in order to prevent the neutrons from escaping the core. They are basically channels filled with a special type of graphite rods to increase the density and the neutron reflecting effectiveness. The reflectors are cooled by RRC channels located at the edge of the layout, which also uses water as coolant. Another thing to pay attention to is the operation of the control rods. In general, the main purpose of the control rods is to control the reactivity rate of the fuel inside the core. If the control rods are inserted to the core, the reactivity decreases. If they are withdrawn, then the reactivity increases. In RBMK reactors, the control rods are placed in an autonomous cooling loop inside the CPS channels. All of the channels inside the core, including the CPS channels, are filled with a circulating flow of water. This basically means that when the control rods are in a withdrawn position, water will fill the space in between, and again, just a quick note, light water is actually a moderately strong neutron absorber, which can reduce the overall number of neutrons in the core, therefore resulting in a reduction of reactivity. To solve this issue, the control rods of RBMK reactors use special water displacers made of graphite. These displacers are 4 meters long and are tipped to the control rods. So, when the rods are in a withdrawn position, the graphite displacers can fill the space instead of the water to further increase the reactivity, making it a very aggressive method in controlling the reactivity within the core. RBMK reactors generally have three different types of control rods. The first one is the manual control rods, or MCR, which are responsible for controlling the radial field of energy emission. It consists mainly of two parts. The upper part is the absorber that is about 6 meters long. It is made of boron carbide and it's responsible for absorbing the neutrons. And the lower part is a graphite displacer. The second type is the shortened absorber rods, or SAR, which are responsible for controlling the depth-wise variations of energy emission. Now, unlike the MCR, the SAR control rods have the graphite displacers on the upper part instead, and they are also inserted from bottom to top, which is opposite to the other types of the control rods. And finally, we have the fast-acting scram rods, or FASR, that act as emergency control rods. And unlike the previous version of the control rods, the FASR do not have graphite displacers attached to them. They fully act to absorb neutrons. Now, it is also worth noting that FASR control rods are actually a further improvement of the automatic control rods that were present in the RBMK-1000 reactor type in Chernobyl, as a result of the accident. FASR rods can be inserted at a much quicker rate compared to the older automatic control rods in Chernobyl, and it is speculated to have improved neutron absorbing capabilities. The movement of the control rods can either be automatically controlled or manually done by the operators. The control room of RBMK reactors also have various scram buttons and switches in case of an emergency. Each of them have different operations. For example, the AZ5 switch triggers the insertion of all the control rods spontaneously to the core. The BAS switch, 
only inserts the FASR or AC rods. The CPS also consists of channels equipped with fission chambers and sensors for monitoring the power density within the core. In the RBMK-1500, the CPS also has an emergency process protection system, which consists of various safety operations in the events of accidents, such as a fuel channel rupture. On top of that, it also has an emergency core cooling system that functions to further cool the reactor core even after it has been shut down completely. This system has its own loops and circulation systems. This is because even though the fission chain reaction has stopped, heat is still being produced by the radioactive decay of fission products and fuel elements. Therefore, further cooling is required. So, in conclusion, RBMK reactors have a total of 2488 graphite columns. In the RBMK 1500, 1661 are fuel assembly channels, 235 are CPS channels, and the other four columns are radial reflectors and RRC channels. The RBMK-1000 type seems to have a slightly different arrangement of the channels, but I couldn't find any reliable visualization of what the actual layout was actually like in the RBMK-1000, and so far, all I got was this model from Wikipedia, though I couldn't really confirm if this is 100% accurate, so keep that in mind. Now, ever since the Chernobyl incident, RBMK reactors received a bad reputation for having major safety issues. This is because aside from the recklessness of the operators, the design features also contributed to the accident, mainly in the design flaws of the control and protection system. One of these being the AZ-5. Remember, when the AZ-5 switch is activated, it inserts all of the control rods spontaneously to shut down the reactor. However, at the time the reactor was already at the critical state due to the operators pushing it too far. On top of that, when the control rods are inserted, the graphite displacers in them would have to displace the remaining water and steam at the bottom of the reactor. Remember, RBMK reactors have a positive void reactivity, which means less water, more reactivity. This event caused a surge in power density within the core, which then causes the reactor core to explode. Ever since then, modifications to the reactors have been made. The positive void coefficient was reduced, the fuel enrichment was increased from 2% to around 24 to 2.6%, and finally, the CPS and the control rods were redesigned and upgraded. The time for the insertion of the control rods were reduced from 18 seconds to 14 seconds. 24 new FASR control rods were introduced, and the number of SAR control rods were increased up to 40. If you want to learn more about all this, you can read the journals, which I will provide links in the description. That is all. If you think I made a mistake somewhere, please notify me in the comments section below. And that will be all. Thanks for watching.